I see T3 timeouts in my cable modems log. Does this impact my data speeds? The answer is yes. T3 timeouts could be an indicator that your overall speeds and overall service performance is degraded. And there is something you may be able to do about it. To fully understand T3 timeouts and why this is something you may be able to change, read on. I'm Brady Volt, founder of the Volt Firm and Nimble This. I have nearly 30 years experience in the broadband and cable modem industry. I'm here to provide education, not clickbait. If you like the content, please do hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell if you'd like to be notified of upcoming videos on related content. Now back to the show. So what are T3 timeouts? First, let's start with a basic understanding of why you're seeing T3 timeouts and what they're telling you. Per the data over cable service interface specification, or DOCSIS for short, each cable modem must check in with the cable modem termination system, or CMTS, once every 30 seconds. During this time, the cable modem sends a range request message to the CMTS upon receiving the range response message. The CMTS must respond back to the cable modem with a range response message within that 30 second window. This is called station maintenance and it's covered in detail on my blog site which you can check out for more information on that. If there are any impairments in the cable plant, the range request sent by the cable modem may become damaged. This means that the CMTS may not receive the range request message if the CMTS does not receive the range request, it will not transmit the required range response to the cable modem within 30 seconds. This will cause the cable modem to log a T3 timeout. This is what you're seeing in the cable modem's log file, a failed attempt to perform station maintenance. The cable modem sent a range request, but did not receive back a range response from the CMTS. In most cases, this is because the message was lost or corrupted while traveling to the cable operator's CMTS. So, do T3 timeouts mean my cable modem is going to go offline? Well, a single T3 timeout simply means one station maintenance window was missed. That is, the cable modem failed one time to check in with a CMTS. Is this bad? Well, it depends. If the T3 timeout was lost due to impairments such as damaged coax cable, this could be an indicator that you'll see more T3 timeouts in the future, and your service could continue to get worse. One T3 timeout is not going to cause your modem to go offline. It requires 15 consecutive missed T3 timeouts, or 15 missed range response messages to cause your cable modem to go offline. But not all T3 timeouts are caused by damaged coax cable. A T3 timeout can also be caused by too many users on the CMTS. In this case, a CMTS could have excessive utilization. When this occurs, a CMTS, quite similar to your computer, would have very high CPU utilization and may not be able to process all of the incoming traffic. It may miss some of the incoming range request messages, like one from your cable modem, and then your cable modem ends up with a T3 timeout. This case is actually quite uncommon as most cable operators do watch the utilization on the CMTS. However, changes in user habits such as this sudden increases of many users working from home and many children learning from home due to COVID-19 can have a drastic unplanned impacts to a cable operator's network that, you know, realistically, cable operators could never have planned for. So what does my computer do during T3 timeouts? Well, your computer, your tablet, your Xboxes, your Playstations, or any of the other devices behind the cable modem, they really have no concept or no visibility to T3 timeouts. These devices are transmitting data to the Wi-Fi network, which eventually connects to the Ethernet port on the Wi-Fi access point, or maybe a router connected to the cable modem itself. From your PC's perspective, the cable modem and the DOCSIS network are 
well, they're just quite frankly completely invisible. Your computer is connected directly to the internet from your computer's perspective. But wait, if the modem is dropping range request messages, couldn't it also be dropping real data too? Great point. And this is actually getting to the crux of the matter. When you're seeing T3 timeouts, especially a lot of T3 timeouts, this is frequently an indicator that data could be lost while it's transmitted between the cable modem and the CMTS at the cable operator's head end. Let's assume that there is some data loss between the modem and the CMTS. What does your computer do in this case? There are two primary ways your computer will transmit data. One is TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol. TCP IP is a very reliable protocol and is commonly used for all non-real-time services such as web browsing, email, even video streaming services such as Netflix. When your computer is using TCP IP and transmit a packets, packet of data, it waits for the receiving computer to transmit an acknowledgement, or ACK, A-C-K for short. It waits for that acknowledgement to be transmitted back from the computer that your computer transmitted to, letting your computer know that the receiving computer actually received that packet of data. If an ACK is not transmitted back to your computer, then your computer is going to retransmit that data back to the receiving computer again, and again, and again, and so on, until eventually that receiving computer responds back with an acknowledgement again. This helps a lot if you're on a network with damaged cable in it or some other type of impairments that's causing that data to not get to the receiving computer. However, if your computer needs to keep retransmitting data over and over again, this is going to slow your overall network speeds down a lot. And you're going to see this if you do a speed test. UDP, or User Data Pro Datagram Protocol, is the second method that your computer can use to transmit data. UDP is primarily used for real-time services, such as voice and gaming. There is no ability to retransmit a packet of data when you're on FaceTime, Zoom, gaming, or other platforms where people are hearing and seeing you in real time. UDP will be very susceptible to impairments like damaged coax cable. So how does upstream channel bonding impact T3 timeouts? A question we frequently get. And I have a lot of readers asking about T3 timeouts and channel bonding. By the way, channel bonding is another topic that I've covered frequently on my blog on volfirm.com. Your cable modem will have anywhere from one to eight upstream channels communicating with the CMTS. If you have just one upstream channel, it must communicate with the CMTS once every 30 seconds. Typically, CMTS vendors will actually reduce that time once every 20 seconds to make sure they always fall within the DOCSIS specification. If you have two channels on the upstream, each channel must communicate with a CMTS every 60 seconds in round robin format, meaning each channel will perform station maintenance and each channel will send a range request to the CMTS and receive a range response back within required 30 seconds. However, this process will be performed in round-robin fashion, which will take a total of 60 seconds. 30 seconds for the first channel, plus 30 seconds for the second channel, resulting in a total of 60 seconds for the entire process. If your modem is using four upstream channels, then the total time for all channels to complete station maintenance and come back around to the first channel is four times 30 seconds, or 120 seconds total. The result is that each upstream channel will be performing station maintenance less as the number of upstream channels increases. The result is less T3 errors, even though there could be more impairments present. Does this hide the impairments? Well, not really. 
even though the time takes a little bit longer for your modem, your modem will still register the T3 timeouts and will eventually let your modem and the cable operator know that there is an issue. There are also other indicators to look at, which I'll cover in a future video. So what can I do or what can you do as a subscriber about T3 timeouts? If you're seeing a lot of T3 timeouts in your modem's log, don't immediately start blaming your cable operator. Frequently, upstream issues start in your own home. So here are a couple things that you can do to check. First of all, did you move your cable modem? Most cable operators will install or have you install your modem off of one leg of a two-way splitter. So right here is a two-way splitter. The cable operator signal will come into the top of the two-way splitter and your cable modem will come directly off of one leg of that two-way splitter. The rest of your house network will be fed off the other leg of that two-way splitter. And there's, there's a very good reason for that. We want really clean signal going into the back of your cable modem right off of that two-way splitter. And we want the rest of your house fed off of the other leg of that splitter. We'll get into the details of that in a future video. But this is the ideal method of installation. If your modem is not installed this way, I highly recommend that you update it. And we'll have a video upcoming on this in the, sh in the future. Are all F connectors finger tight on the back of, the, of your modem? And by finger tight, I don't mean Jean-Claude Van Damme tight. We don't actually want to bust the F connector off the back of your modem, but we want to make sure that this is a nice, solid, tight connector. If it's loose, if it's sloppy loose, that can cause T3 timeouts. That can cause impairments and performance problems with your cable modem. So make sure that this connector is nice and finger tight snug. Make sure every other connector in your house is nice and finger tight snug. Don't take a large wrench and bust it off. That's obviously going to cause problems. Check for any damage on your coax cable. Just visually inspect it and make sure that there's not any dents in that. If you have a coax cable that was maybe pinched in a door, pinched underneath a chair, has your dog been chewing on the coax cable recently? All of those are going to cause problems. Coax cable is actually rather fragile. If you take a piece of coax cable and make a tight bend in it, that coax cable is no longer any good. Throw this piece of coax cable away because that will cause T3 timeouts and will actually cause performance degradation in your network. Sharp bends, nicks, dents, or anything that fundamentally damages the coax cable can cause T3 timeouts and slow your data. Replace that piece of coax cable. If the piece of coax cable running to your house is buried, we call that buried coax, did you or any contractors hit that with a shovel while gardening? And no, electrical tape is not a fix. You will need proper tools or your cable operator to fix or replace the drop cable. If the coax cable is running through the air, we call that aerial coax. Make sure it's not rubbing against anything like a tree or a house. When the wind blows that coax cable through the air, it's going to rub the rubber sheathing off, and this is a protective coating. It'll rub that right off of the coax cable. That's going to damage the coax cable, allow water to ingress into the coax cable, and that will also cause T3 timeouts and cause problems with your service. You'll need professional tools to fix that coax. You'll need to replace that coax. You'll have to have your cable operator come out and replace that coax for you. So I'll, again, I'll do a future article and video on how to repair your own coax, but the above tips should get you started. Remember, loose connectors and damaged coax in or around your home will cause T3 timeouts and will cause you to have issues with your cable and cable modem service. So to wrap things up, T3 timeouts are just one indicator that your cable modem may be struggling while transmitting data on the upstream. If you occasionally see a T3 timeout, don't worry about it. This is not unusual. 
what you don't want to see is a log full of T3 timeout messages. When this occurs, there will be other symptoms of problems. Other indicators that you will want to look for are uncorrectable code word errors, the number of channels that your modem is bonded to versus the number of channels that your modem should be bonded to, your modem's modulation error ratio, or MER, sometimes also called SNR, and more. Again, I'll dig into these in a much deeper dive in a future video on how to interpret this data, but for now, keep an eye on your loose connectors and damaged coax cables because it matters. Thanks for watching and staying to the end of this video. Again, please do hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.